اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم واللاتی یاتین الفاحشة من نسائکم فاستشہدو علیہن اربعات منکم فَإِن شَهِدُوا فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ فِي الْبُيُوتِ حَتَّى يَتَوَفَّاهُنَّ الْمَوْتُ وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُنَّ سَبِيلًا صدق اللہ العظیم Now before we start with the second issue let me say something more about this law of inheritance as many of you must be recalling the first directive that came regarding this inheritance was the ayah in the 22nd section of Surah Al-Baqarah قُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا حَذَرَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ إِن تَرَكَ خَيْرًا لِلْوَسِيَّةُ لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ حَقًّا عَلَى الْمُتَّقِينَ that was the first instruction that if a person is dying and he is leaving some property behind him he must make a will a bequest and that will should be in favor of the parents and relatives it should not happen that all the property is possessed by one son or the only sons nothing to daughters nothing to the parents they are left without anything but the still there was the portions were not fixed and at that time this wasiya this making a will was for imperative kutiba alaykum it has been written upon you that you must make a bequest you must make a will before dying that whatever i am leaving behind well such and such portion should be given to my father such and such portion should be given to my mother and to such and such persons that was a must for every dying muslim but now when this law of inheritance was revealed in this surah nisa that ayah stands abrogated it is mansukh now making a will is not essential not imperative because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has himself fixed the portions that the parents will be getting that the sons will be getting that the daughters will be get, getting that the wife will be getting or the husband will be getting out of the the property of the deceased wife so actually now there can be no wasiya lil waris but you know this is the relationship between sunnah and quran the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam restricted this right of wasiya to one third of the total property number one it is not farz now if somebody dies without making any will it's okay no harm to him he has not acted against the advice of the sharia but if he wants to make a will in favor of some friend in favor of some institution some center some you know good work of charity is going on and he wants that some part of his his property should be given to that institution then he can make a will a bequest only up to the one third of the total value of whatever he is leaving behind and number two he cannot make any bequest in favor of those whose portions have been fixed by this law of inheritance these two things you must keep in mind now the second issue which is being dealt here in this surah nisa is that of sex discipline sex anarchy and sex discipline these two things are very different and opposite to each other there was a sex anarchy in in the arabian society before the advent of islam and very gradually quran and for that matter the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the discipline that society the the sex you know now neither quran says that sex is evil no it's not evil it's natural it's a natural urge so actually it must be placed within limits must be controlled there should be no anarchy it must be disciplined so now these issues will be discussed one by one wallati yatin al fahishat min nisaikum as for those of your women who commit some adultery of your women muslim women fastashhidu alayhin arbaatan minkum so you call four witnesses over her but those witnesses with should be minkum muslims not non muslims now you keep in mind that this society up till that time at madina was a mixed society muslims were there even the pagan arabs were there out of the tribes of aws and khazraj who had not accepted islam up till now 
Then the third element was the Jews. Three very strong tribes of the Jews were present in Medina. So it was a fixed society. And actually what we call a state. The state had not been established up till now. The authority was distributed. The whole jurisdiction was not there for the Prophet ﷺ. That is why this ayah. Now supposing a Muslim woman has committed adultery and she has committed this sin with some non-Muslim. And that non-Muslim, that Jew for example, is not within the jurisdiction of the Muslim course or the Muslim system order. What to do? So this ayah is pertaining to that case. Wallati yatin al min nisaikum. As for your women, if someone among them commits that sin, first ashidu alayhim arbaatam minkum. So you call four witnesses, those witnesses from the Muslims. Fine shahidu, if they testify that yes, we saw this woman committing this sin. Fam sekuhunna fil buyut. Now you restrain them, confine them to their homes. They will not be allowed to go out of the homes, restricted, confinement, as if now their homes will be like jails for them. They will be imprisoned in their homes. <laughs> Till that time that death takes them away. It's a lifelong imprisonment. Till death. Or till such time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens another way for them. That way was when the last, you know, injunction came about this adultery. What's the punishment? That is in Surah An nur That was the sameen that Allah opened. But till the revelation of those ayat of Surah An nur this was the order and this had to be abide, abided by. وَاللَّاتِي يَاتِينَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مِنْ نِسَائِكُمْ فَاسْتَشْهِدُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةً مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ شَهِدُوا فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ فِي الْبُيُوتِ حَتَّى يَتَوَفَّاهُنَّ الْمَوْتِ أَوْ يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُنَّ سَبِيلًا وَاللَّزَانِ يَاتِيَانِهَا مِنْكُمْ And as for those two who have committed this sin of adultery and fornication and both of them are from you, both are Muslims, legal Muslims, then what to do? Now both are in the jurisdiction of the Muslim society. Both will belong to the same society. For what, what is the commandment? Fazu huma. Punish them both. Now the, what type of punishment is to be given is not described here. Any type of tazir, any type of punishment. You can strike them, you can keep them in the confined somewhere. So that can be decided. That could be decided, it can't be decided now because now the final judgment, final injections have been revealed in Surah An-Nur. But till that time this was the injection that had to be kept. وَاللَّذَانِ يَاتِيَانِهَا مِنْكُمْ يَاتِيَانِهَا مِنْكُمْ فَعَزُوهُمَا فَإِن تَابَا وَأَصْلَحَا فَعَارِزُوا عَنْهُمَا But if they repent and they mend their ways, they promise, make solemn pledge, never to commit it again, then let them go their way. Farizu anhuma in Allah kana tawwaban rahima. Because verily Allah Ta'ala is very much acceptor of tawbah. And he is very much merciful.